Yes, sir. Now, say if now what now this like I said, there's other laws, the statutes that go along with the laws, the laws and commandments, right? So we're gonna show you what the law said. It was the Matthew 12. We're gonna uh, do it on the side. Matthew 12. So we're gonna show you something else according to the Bible. So say it's been a rough week. This is not something you practice. But say you had a rough week and you just so happen didn't have any money. You got paid Friday, but you were unable to get to the uh, the pharmacy. You were unable to the pharmacy. And your child, I don't know their condition, but they said they had seizures or a heart condition, something that's life threatening that can destroy their life. All right. The Lord said the statute for keeping the Sabbath holy. It is not un it's not unlawful to do good on the Sabbath. I understand this, so we're going to read this and uh, give me Matthew 12. It's not unlawful to do good on the Sabbath. But once the brother reads the scripture, we're going to explain it in detail, all right? Thus of the Lord. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 11. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. It, wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. So take for instance, say if one of our brothers, one of my brothers here, they had a flat tire on the Sabbath day. All right? And they needed to get a tow truck up there. Nobody had AAA, nobody had any type of uh, any type of insurance to get the truck towed, and it maybe it cost what? 25 hours or something to get it told. If that brother is stranded and he's going, especially if on the Sabbath day, and he's going to do the Lord's work, it's not unlawful for him to do good on that day to help your brother out. Right. Now that doesn't mean go out and just, well shoot, I got one flat tire, might as well go buy, buy four brand new tires. No, that's not what that's talking about. Fix your issue and keep the rest of the Sabbath holy day. And continue also ask the Most High God to forgive you. Because the Holy, the Lord told you, no buying or selling on the Sabbath day. Even though the Lord said it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath day, still we want to be in that mindset of, hey, I hope that I hope that don't happen again, so I won't have to break the Sabbath. Because we don't want to put a spit on ourselves or other people that may see us out here buying or selling or doing things like that. So, or to even help you even better, if you could just give your brother a ride and maybe get the car towed to the house and then fix the tire the next day. There's always ways around not breaking the Sabbath. But the Lord said, if it be a case where you had to help your brother, and you, you have children with disabilities, if they needed their, their medicine on the Sabbath day to get their uh, the nitroglycerin, if they have seizures or they have heart issues, they need the medicine, go to the store and get that medicine. But don't go to the store and say, well, shit, while well, I'm in here, I might as well grab some chips and some snacks and some drinks because the kids like that. No, now you're profaning the Sabbath day. That's not what the Lord was talking about. Right All right? So I want you to understand it because these things is what's going to help you and your family get eternal life. It's not, it's, you're not going to bring damnation to yourself when you keep the commandments of God. So keep that in mind. Always make sure, yourself, make sure you're prepared before the Sabbath day because... At the end of the day, you don't want to tempt the Lord and all that, because we don't know our measurement of, uh, we don't know our measurement of the grace that the Lord has in our lives. So we don't want to tempt the Father in any way or manner. All right? But we do, but the Lord, the reason he put that in the scriptures, because he understands things will happen and do happen to our people. Uh, give me Sirach chapter 40 verse 1. We want to show you in the Bible, does said the Lord, that things are going to happen in our lives from the day we come out of the womb to the day we go into the grave. Sirach chapter 40 verse 1. The book of Sirach chapter 40 verse 1. Great travail is created for every man, and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb, till the day that they return to the mother of all things. So understand, it's not like the Christian church, we're not going to give you prosperity speech. We're not going to tell you, give, uh, pay your tithe and everything is going to be all right. No, that's not what I'm going to tell you. We're going to tell you, thus saith the Lord. The Lord that God told us, from the day we come out of our mother's womb to the day we go to the grave, we're going to go through travail. There's going to be problems. But that's why you have your brothers and your family to lean on. The brothers and the Lord to lean on. To help, to help you out in those times of travail, in those times of problems. So once you start keeping the commandments, eating clean foods, keeping the Sabbath holy, uh, not hating your brother in your heart, uh, not having an evil eye towards your brother, uh, dressing appropriately, keeping, uh, keeping um, uh, the ceremonial laws, the dietary laws, all these things. We're going to show you, uh, we just gave you some of the dietary laws, eating clean food. We're going to give you some, we just gave you one of the uh, high holy days, which is the Sabbath day. Uh, what's some other, um, so we got ceremonial, dietary, 
Civil. Uh, civil laws, moral, and sacrificial. The sacrificial laws done away with. We can show you that in, um, in Hebrews 10. We don't sacrifice anymore because the Lord, he came and fulfilled that when he died on the cross for our sins. All right? Now, let's get him a high holy day. Let's get him a... Uh, let's show him that Christ... Give me down John 10. Show him what Christ kept. We're going to show you how holy that Christ kept that we should be keeping to this day. All right? Because the Christian church show t talks about uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving... Easter, all those things, the Lord our God told us not to keep those days. Why? Because those days profane his Sabbath. Can you see all You good? All right, we're going to show you how holy that Christ kept. All right? Me. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So you see that? Even Christ kept what day again? And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication. Do you know what the Feast of Dedication is? No, the Feast of Dedication, that's not Christmas. The Feast of Dedication is towards is during the winter time towards the end of the year. That's the it's called Hanukkah, which you may have heard it called. That's the that's the high holy one of the high holidays we're supposed to be keeping. Christmas is only one wicked ass day. But this day, we got over, we got like we got a week to celebrate. Right, right. That's now, a beautiful thing. Our high holidays. We supposed to celebrate Hanukkah. Oh, I didn't celebrate. I, yeah, you're supposed to celebrate Hanukkah. That, they stole that from us. Right. I'm going to show you what, what the Lord said about those people that stole it from us. Let me get uh, Revelation 3 and 9. I'm going to show you what the Lord said about those people that stole that from us. Because remember you heard before, Christ, the, uh, the Bible said from the beginning when we come out of our grave, from the mother's womb to the grave, we're going to go through travail. But watch this. Because they stole our identity. They stole everything from us. They stole Hanukkah from us. And they don't right. even keep Hanukkah the right way. We hold Hanukkah down. Watch That's this. Right. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. Those people that they keep Hanukkah, they call themselves the Jews, but they are not. Watch this, read. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. The Lord thy God said those people that call themselves the Jews in that day when he comes back to redeem his people that's keeping the commandments, those people will be bowing at our feet. Yes, sir. Those people will be bowing at our feet. We have to keep Hanukkah. That's the feast of the That's one. That's just one of our many high holidays. Right. We got 52 weeks out of the year, and guess one high holiday we keep every week: the Sabbath. Bring it out. Right. Every week we got we got a day to uh, relax and celebrate, and we have a good time. We got a uh, new moon. That's every month. That's some more high holidays. Right. So you that's five right there every month that we keep. Right. On top of other ones that we keep. We keep the Lord loves his children, and we have to come out to his commandments. Because once we get the kingdom, the Lord gonna keep these high holidays and it's gonna keep it jumping for us all the time, man. That's right. Our rulership is meant to have a good time. You ever see the other nations that when they when they go Africa, they jumping off of planes and diving in deep in the water and just doing all kind of crazy stuff. Cause they rule. When we get the kingdom, we're gonna enjoy the feast days the way they're supposed to be enjoyed. We're gonna have a good time with each other right. all the time, thus said the Lord. That's right. Because the Lord called those people, the ones that called themselves Jews, he called them liars. Let's see what the Jews look like. Let's get there in uh, Hebrew. Let's get them on. Uh, what tribe of Christ came from? You know where the tribe of Christ came from? Christ came from this tribe right here. The tribe of Judah. The so called blacks you see today, you. They, that's, from the, that's the tribe of Judah. So we're going to show you what Christ is like. So if Christ came from the tribe of Judah, what does his people look like? Because Jew, Jew is short for Judah. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. They said it's evident that our Lord sprang out from Judah. Obviously, this man, the way he looks, you can tell he came from those people. I can look at you and tell that you're my people. It's evident. It's evident the way we eat, the way our, the way uh, the way we talk, the way we act. It's evident that we came from the same area. If you knew somebody from, uh, shoot, I don't know, uh, from California, their accent, the way they talk, the way they dress, you can tell. Oh, he definitely from LA. Or somebody from Chicago, the way they talk, the way they act. Or somebody from uh, Louisiana, the way they talk, the way they act, the way they dress, the way they eat, their whole culture. You can tell. It's evident. It's obvious that you're from here. And that's what the Bible is saying about Christ. It's evident, it's obvious that Christ came from the tribe of Judah. And that tribe of Judah, his people look just like him. Right. So those people that call themselves Jews and are not, the Lord said they are liars. And the Lord hates liars. 
and liars will be destroyed, thus says the Lord thy God. Right. right. You understand that? So we gotta teach our brothers and sisters. You got any questions, sir? No, no. All pa Not all, now, anyway. All patience to the most high for your patience, man. That's one thing as saints that we must have is patience. That's uh right. get on Revelation 14 and 12. That's one thing as our people, as the saints of God, we must have patience. We have to have patience because a lot of things are gonna come up against us and it's gonna seem hard. You're like, man, we ain't got no hope. We ain't got no hope. The Lord said, be patient. Don't worry, I got you. Keep my commandments and live. Remember the said in Ecclesiastes, the whole duty of man is to keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. That's the whole duty of man is to keep his commandments. All right? Watch this. Patience is a, is a key thing. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Keep keeping his commandments and having faith. Give me that in James, faith that I would. Because the Lord tells you, not only going with faith, you have to keep his works at the same time. Because faith without works is dead. He's going to get it for you, James. So having your patience and keeping God's commandments, which are the works, doing those at the same time, that's what, that's what Christ is coming for. That's what he's coming for. Those that endure. Those that endure. Watch this. James, chapter 2, verse 17. And even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So you understand that? You keeping the commandments of God is showing that you have faith that Christ is going to return and redeem his people. Give me all the Luke 1 16. You keeping, you keeping the laws of God, you have faith in those works that the Lord is going to come back for his people that's keeping his commandments. Though with that, you have to have patience doing that thing. Because people, our own people are going to come against us. Other nations are going to come against us. They're going to poison our food. They're going to indoctrinate our children. We've been indoctrinated. We're still breaking the yokes and the irons off our minds that were implanted to us as children coming up. You understand, you understand what the Bible is saying? So when you're reading this, you have to understand, I have to be patient. I have to understand that Christ is going to come back to me as long as I keep his commandments. I have to endure to the end. Watch this. Luke chapter 1 verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. The Lord said we, be, we shall be saved from our enemies. So we got to find out, do y'all know who our enemies are? And we're going to prove that in the Bible. Not only just the white people, because there's many nations, all nations are against us. But we're going to show you that, what you just said in the Bible. Uh, let's go to the curse of Deuteronomy uh, 28 and verse 68. Many, all nations hate us. Matter of fact, go to Psalms, how they can uh, consult against evil. We're going to show you this first, then we're going to jump to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. But watch this, because the Lord, that's not the only nation. Who has that? Uh, we had the sign with the uh, the Arabs and stuff up there. We got it out here. But we don't. Okay, but all nations took part in our captivity. The Israelites, the so-called Arabs that you know today, they had us in the sub-Saharian slave trade. Every nation, when you read the book of Judges on your own time, go through, that, go through that book and read. Many of the nations had us in captivity. Everybody had a turn in our captivity. So it ain't just white people that hate us. All the nations gathered together to hate us. Watch this. I got a question. Why is that? Why all the nations? All, that's a good Sorry, question, man. sir. We're about to show you that. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Yes. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So all these, all these nations have come against us. They've had an angry, you know what a tumult is? A tumult is an angry, an angry gathering. So don't 
don't get it twisted. When they have those meetings over there in Germany and they sit in that round table, they're discussing the destruction of the Israelites. Right. They're discussing the destruction of you and you and your children, your children, your grandchildren, your mothers and your, your fathers and your aunts and your uncles. They're sitting around, they're angry because they want us to be destroyed. They're having an anger tumult against these people right here, against the 12, 12 tribes of Israel. They're having an angry gathering to destroy our people. Well, uh, which one is, I think it's 82 for the hit list. They had their names to nations. Yeah, it's coming up. Again. Watch this. You want to hear the name of the nations. Watch this. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Watch this. They said they are confederate with one consent. They all were in agreement. We're going to destroy these people. So their name will be no remembrance. Because guess what? Before you knew that you was Israel, what did you call yourself? What did you call your nationality? Black American. Black American. What did you call yourself, sir? Black. Black? Yes, sir. What year were you born? I was born in 61, 1961. 1961? Yes, sir. What was your birth certificate when you were born? I had, I had to look at that. Had okay, my children, their grandfather, he was born in 1944. His birth certificate said color. And I'm pretty sure it said something different before then. My, my head said color. Yeah. You see? And his said black. Mine said black slash African American. All right? So he they cut us off. They cut our name off from remembrance. Watch this. Verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab. So the so-called white man, Edom. The Ishmaelites are so-called Arabs. Who else? Of Moab. Moab, the so-called Chinese. Read. And the Hagarees. Gibal. Mm -hmm. And Ammon. Mm -hmm. And Amalek. Mm -hmm. The Philistines. And the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. All these nations have came against the children of Israel. But why have these nations came against the ch children of Israel? Who delivered us into these nations' hands for us to be punished? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 68. Let's see why did we go, why did we uh, go into the hands of these, and why did they all come against us? Let's start at uh, verse 15 first, and then verse 68. Watch this, 28 uh, 15 first, Deuteronomy chapter 68. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Lord said for us not keeping his laws and his commandments, all these curses will come upon us and overtake us till we've been destroyed. So I got to ask you a question. Have you all had, ever had any health problems in your life? You ever had any health problems in your life? Uh, no, not too many. Not too many. What was some? You ever had any aches and pains in your body? Uh, or, or, I had what's some minor health problems? I had you asthma had? when I was younger, but I don't you had know. what? Asthma when I was young. Eczema. Asthma. Asthma when I was young. Okay. You had any health problems and issues in your life? Uh, back pain when I was working. Back pain when you working? See, as children of God, you shouldn't even be working. If we had the kingdom, people would be working for you. As a, as, a, as a child of God, no plague or sickness should be upon your body. You shouldn't even have been dealing with asthma. You understand? But because we broke God's commandments, all these curses came upon us. So we're going to show you what God did to us. Uh, verse 28. Verse 68. Verse 68. Excuse me. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Lord say he shall bring us into Egypt again with ships. So what does that word Egypt mean? Then we're going to grab that for you right quick. Then we're going to jump back to Deuteronomy 28 and 16. Because I want you to get an understanding. You ask, her, why did all these nations come against us? We're going to show you why the Lord delivered us into the hands of our enemies. Because we broke his commandments. But we're going to show you what the word Egypt means. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. The word Egypt is synonymous with the word bondage. It means slavery. Chains and shackles on your throats and your hands and your wrists and your waist. That's what it's talking about. Egypt is bondage. All right, so we're going to jump back to verse 68. Listen up real good. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. So the Lord is going to bring us into captivity again on cargo slave ships. This is prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And here in this land in America, who was sold unto their enemies on auction blocks? Right here in Virginia. Our people, right? This is prophesied in the Bible for breaking God's laws. Read. Right. 
and fair ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. And here we were sold unto our enemies for slave men and slave women and slave children, and nobody will buy us that were by me. Nobody will be able to redeem you or be able to save you. The only one that's going to do that is Christ. That's but right. the only way he's going to do that is we keep his commandments. That's right. Keep his commandments and live. All right, so I want you to understand everything we read in this Bible is of the Lord. This is of uh, 1 Peter 4 11. Everything we speak in the Bible, everything we speak is not our words. This is of the, uh, is of the Lord. Everything we speak is of the Lord. Watch this. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Amen. The book of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God give him, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Matthew 26. So brothers, I want to let you know everything you heard from these men today, from my brothers and myself, this is of the Lord. We only speak in the Lord's words, all right? So, uh, Matthew 26? Matthew chapter 26. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 6. I want to show you how our sisters play a vital role in our life and how Christ made a memorial, that had a sister make a memorial for him. Watch this. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, So what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman have done, be told for a memorial of her. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.